So tonight I'm going to speak about, or I'm going to do my best, to speak about uh, uh, responsibility, uh, its relationship to, to dharma, to action, and in particular the actions that we take as individuals and collectively as members of this community in regards to mindfulness and MBSR and the whole plethora of MBI, MBIs that are beginning to uh, come forth in the world. So here's a bit of a roadmap. I'm going to begin by looking into the nature of responsibility by posing a set of questions that I hope will provoke a kind of deeper kind of questioning and reflection in all of us and in our work as we take it on individually and as we take it on collectively. In fact, I see this collective inquiry as the central theme of this meeting from, from what began this morning at 8 o'clock right through till uh, the conclusion on Sunday and, of course, in particular on Saturday, the forums that are going to be set up as well and develop, that we've developed. Then I'm going to explore a little bit the relationship between responsibility and duty and dharma as a kind of navigate, see if we can get some navigational uh, bearings from those, from that exploration, and particularly as we move towards the next horizon in the next five to ten years. I mean, that's the beauty of horizons. Have you noticed if you're out on a sailing ship, you head to the horizon when, when you get there, it's just bigger. It's just bigger. It just keeps receding. Then I'm going to do, uh, examine a little bit in, in some detail action. And right action, the nature of right action, and what I'm calling holy action. And I'm not going to use PowerPoint. I'm going to I'd like to appeal to your ears. I think in our culture we're moving very far from the ears as an object of attention, of a way of conveying meaning of, of our communicating with one another. Uh, because everything is becoming far more visual. Uh, all of our technology is basically visually based, and it's quite wonderful on one level. But on another level, there's a tremendous intimacy and richness in the oral tradition uh, because it em it's got a lot of emphasis on the body and on the voice and on a kind of eye-to-eye -eye intimacy and uh, the sense of human connection, human to human. I suspect, or at least I hope, that at the end of the talk you leave with more questions than answers. I don't have the answers to all these questions. I think it's actually our work to ask the questions and then proceed. Uh, and it's an interesting thing. I, I'm sure you've noticed that in our culture we reward people for giving answers. It's, in fact, a big piece of the educational system. But we give answers before people have questions, often enough. And that's a big problem, because what really gets us involved in something is our curiosity, our wonder, our awe, our bewilderment about something. And so I actually see it as a, as a bias and a, and a big flaw on our educational system, because it under, undermines uh, the very things that catalyze genius in ourselves and in other people. But of course, the poets and the Dharma teachers of all traditions, they've known this well for a very long time. Here's a quote from Mary Oliver I found just the other day about questions. She says in... Uh, one of her little books. In the universe, we are given two gifts. So why don't you take a moment, and I'm going to, because uh, uh, you know, I've got an unfair advantage, because uh, I know what they are, according to her. But 
In the universe, we're given two gifts. Why don't you just settle for a moment and, and, and you know, reflect inside yourself. What, what could she be pointing at? What are the two gifts that I've been given? Here's her answer. The ability to love and the ability to ask questions. That's fantastic, I think. But then she goes on because she knows she's wise. And she says, so she's talking about love and the ability to love and the ability to ask questions. And she says, which are at the same time the fires that warm us and the fires that scorch us. The fires that warm us and the fires that scorch us. I think this is a really important reminder because when we love the questions and ask them openly and honestly, often enough, at least in my experience, the returning answer scorches. It, it may actually point at something new or something freshly or provoke us in new ways or might actually shatter in some ways all ideals that we have on a, on a larger kind of truth that we hadn't seen before. But if we don't ask the question honestly, we won't get that response back. And, you know... Walt Whitman knew this really well. I try my best to read parts of Leaves of Grass with regularity. Uh, in the first poem of Leaves of Grass is Song of Myself. It's 62 pages. One poem, 62 pages. In the poem, he asks the reader a lot of questions. In the back end of the poem alone, uh, more than 60 questions. In the back end of the poem, in the last six pages, I didn't even write them all down. Here's a sum of those questions, and I'll ask you to take them in. Why should I wish to see God better than this day? Oh, sons, oh, grasses, if you do not say anything, how can I say anything? Will you speak before I am gone? Who wishes to walk with me? Who need be afraid of the merge? Who need be afraid of the merge? What is a man anyway? What am I and what are you? Do I contradict myself? And then he goes on and says, very well, I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. Famous lines. And then following, there's a marvelous interaction uh, with Krishnamurti and people at one of his talks. He's talking about responsibility when, when we have a real taste, a direct taste of an undivided world. So here's the questions he asks. What is your reaction when you feel that you are humanity? What is your reaction when you feel you are humanity? How do you respond to the challenge? How do you meet any challenge? Meet is the operative word. How do you meet any challenge? If you meet it in your old individual conditioning, your response will naturally be inadequate, totally inadequate and fragmentary. It will be rather shoddy. So you have to find out what your response is to this great challenge. Do, does your mind meet it greatly or with fears, anxieties, the little concerns about yourself? That line struck me so hard. Does your mind meet it greatly? What does that mean? Does your mind meet it greatly? I think all of us in this community 
need to ask those questions of ourselves. Does our mind need it greatly? But it only gets more provocative as he goes on, because he says this, the responsibility depends the responsibility depends upon the response to the challenge. The responsibility depends upon the response to the challenge. If your response is small, your responsibility is small. If you see the size of the cloth, as Naomi Shihab Nye says, your responsibility is bigger. And then he asks the question, is it just a flutter, your response? A romantic appeal? Something profound that will transform your whole way of looking at life? Questions, questions, questions. Then you are no longer British or American or French. Will you give that up? Will you give that up? Or merely play with the idea as a marvelous utopian concept? He just knows how to put the knife in. The responsibility depends upon the response. The direct recognition of a whole, undivided, indivisible world is, in my experience, the heart of mindfulness and of MBSR. That doesn't mean everybody who practices MBR has that experience in some fantastical way. But I have seen it over and over and over again for as long as I've been walking into our clinic. People having a taste of being undivided. A taste of saying, what I now know on the inside, I'm going to try and live on the outside. And it's a big responsibility. And that's why people say somewhere around the fifth week, wait a second, this isn't about stress reduction. <laughs> and on one level, it's funny. It's funny to us, too. We laugh about it all the time. But you know what? On the other hand, it's, they tremble because they say, this is about my life. And then they realize the response to the challenge is the responsibility. To that realization, their response to that realization is the responsibility. And you know what? That's a powerful moment.